Now, I'll tell you what is a road. What is going to happen? Let's say that you want to store. So the file size is 192 megabytes. You want to store it in a Hadoop cluster. Now, there are a lot of things which actually matters to your real time experience. Here we are just learning the basics because in a real company, if you want to connect with a Hadoop cluster, the Hadoop cluster will be somewhere else. So if you are sitting here, the Hadoop cluster will be separate, you will be separate, right? So you will get something called a Hadoop client package. Okay, so one way is that you get something called a Hadoop client. Using that you can access from your laptop. Second is that you can log into a node. There is something called a gateway machine. This is called gateway machine. So if I am sitting here, this is me, very nice, right? So I can just connect to this machine. From this machine, I can connect to the Hadoop cluster. You don't directly get inside the Hadoop cluster. That's my point for security reasons and many other reasons. So companies do two things. Either they will install something called a Hadoop client. Even that is very rare. What we used to do, there will be a Linux machine called Gateway Node. You will get a username and password. You type it, you connect to this machine. This machine will already know how to reach here. You don't have to worry. You issue the commands here, it will run here. But whatever way. So let's say you want to push this 192 MB file from your machine. You connect it to the Gateway machine. You said, okay, upload the data. What is going to happen is that first thing which is going to happen is that your name node machine, this is a master. This guy will tell you something called block size. There is something called block size. This block size can be configured for every Hadoop cluster when you are installing Hadoop. So I am assuming that the block size for this cluster is 64 megabytes. So what is block size? Block size uh, tell you, block size will tell you what is the maximum size of data that you can store. Meaning, if you are storing a 192 MB file, what will happen? It will divide that into three blocks. Same thing happens on your laptop. If you are storing a, a, a song on your laptop, what happens? Okay, you store a song, MP3 song, right, on your laptop. What do you think? The hard disk will actually take the song as it is? Or it will divide it. It will divide it. It will not store as it is. I think Linux uses 4 kilobyte of 4 KB block size. Linux. Windows also uses similar. Any file system will chop your data and store. Same thing happens in Hadoop also. So I, I am assuming that this Hadoop cluster has a block size of 64 MB. So this name node will get back to your client package and say that divide your file into 3 or whatever you want because the block size is 64 MB. So what is going to happen? This file will, will get divided into three blocks. You don't have to do this. This will happen behind the scenes. Like you don't have to say that what is your block size. You know, it will happen automatically. This gateway has Hadoop client installed. That is what. So this uh, Hadoop client on the gateway will already communicate with name node. Name node will say that boss in my cluster, the block size is 64 MB. You manage yourself. So the client will divide your data into blocks of 64, 64, 64. Total is 198. So now you have three blocks, B1, B2, and B3. You have three blocks now of the data, right? And then again, you go back to the name node. You ask the name node, I have three blocks. Okay, now tell me where to store. And the name node, what it does, it has communication with all the data nodes. It knows where, how much space is available. It will tell you that, do one thing, store the first block probably here, just an example. Store the second block probably here, B2. Store the third block here, B3. Most of the cases, the name node will give you different, different machines. It will never allow you to store everything in one machine. So you divide and distribute, that is how you are storing the data. So now your data is divided into three blocks and they are stored in three different data nodes. So this is like six. In reality, you have 50, 500 machines, so three blocks is easy, right? But sometimes a couple of blocks may end up in one machine also, depends on the storage. But ideally, it gets stored like this. Now, you may be wondering why the block sizes. Is... It's not random. It has, name node has an idea like how much storage space is available on each data node. So it will come up with the free machines. Okay, Within that, it just picks randomly three of them and say that you dump it there. And I will tell you. So if you think logically, now if I want to process this data, okay, 
three machines can process this data, right? If I store all the three blocks on one machine, one machine has to process three blocks, right? That makes a difference, right? So ideally, you divide and distribute the data. Most of the cases. You don't have to do it. Name node will do it for you automatically. This is all inside a LAN. This is all inside a LAN. All these machines are communicating with each other. The data nodes all send a heartbeat to the name node saying that they are alive also so that the name node can detect how many of them are alive or down or anything. I can't get my data. So by default in Hadoop, there is a replication of three, which means each block gets replicated three times to other machines. I'll just draw this, then come to your questions. Give me a moment. B2, again B2. And I'm just drawing randomly. I mean, just taking that these are the machines. B3, probably from here. B3. So if you look at each block, each block is replicated three times to different different machines. So now let's say this machine crashes. This B2 is still available here and here. I can recover it from here. And now what happens is that the name node will store the metadata. Meaning the name node will write here. There is a file called abc.txt. It is divided into three blocks. Block one is available on where? Three where is it? 3, 2, 6. six. So B1, 3, 2, 6. B2 where? So the purpose of your name node is to actually store the metadata or the index. And if the name node crashes, you cannot access the cluster. That is for sure. Because if the name node is gone, then everything will be gone. To prevent that, in most of the Hadoop clusters, you will have an active name node and a uh, standby name node. Meaning, there will be two name nodes. These two guys will be in constant communication. So if the active name node crashes and the disaster recovery, to set up that, uh, there is a company called uh, Van Disco, Disco Disco Dance. Van Disco, very interesting company. So Van Disco is one of the popular companies who set up uh, disaster recovery for Hadoop. But you don't do disaster recovery like in traditional systems. Meaning, if I have a 100 node Hadoop cluster, I won't set up a 100 node backup cluster, right? That is waste of money. Very rare King Jong will fire a missile, right? If he fires, God saves, right? So what I will do, in even in the Hadoop cluster, you have to classify the data. You are storing 100 terabyte data. Probably not all 100 terabyte is so important, right? Is it? No, a lot of data is like archival and all. So in the 100 terabyte data, I will identify probably 10 terabyte, which is very critical. And I can periodically back up that data to my DR center. I don't set up a 100 uh, node cluster in uh, NOIDA to back up a cluster from here. So we use a tool called uh, distributed copy, dist CP in Hadoop that can synchronize these uh, two clusters, primary backup, dist CP, it's called distributed copy. 100% is Hadoop availability, right? See, this is what I'm talking about. We used Vandisco in one of our projects. That is why I know. Usually people do not be aware of these things. So I was working as a Hadoop administrator also for some time. That is why I know this. Because this is how, these are all like real time things. Okay. It is configurable. They use 64 also. There is a parameter I'll show you where you can change block size. Okay. Uh, Hadoop, the default uh, uh, block size is 128 MB. You should also know, uh, also understand one more thing. There are three major releases of Hadoop. Hadoop 1, 2, 3. Hadoop 1 is the older release and nobody is using it these days. So you don't have to worry about Hadoop 1. It is not available in production right now. 2013 was the last year when this was used. So no longer used. Hadoop 2 is what you are using, I am using, we are using. This is the current edition. Hadoop 3 released in 2017, December 15, like three months back. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. If you are storing 100 terabyte data in a Hadoop cluster, how much storage you need? So there are multiple approaches. One thing is that some companies, this replication factor can be changed by the way. It's not hard coded. Some companies say two, right? So you get two copy of data. Also while copying the data, you can mention the replication factor. Very interesting thing. I am copying a file, one TB file. This file I can afford to lose. I can say copy with replication one. But it had uh, led into a debate 
in the Hadoop world. So a lot of people said that this is very bad actually. Because three times replication means you are losing a lot of space. That is why in Hadoop 3 there is no replication. And there are only limited types. You can read text, uh, XML, uh, sequence file, key value. So some limited number of types of files are there. And how do you, so this is a very good question. How do you handle unstructured data? It is also a very confusing concept. Many people believe that in the world of big data, you are always playing with uh, videos and Im uh, images. Actually, no. See, many people believe every day you'll go to office and run some facial recognition like you see in the Mission Impossible movie. Kick, 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 kick. And yes, yo, I got uh, big data. No, you don't do that actually. You can analyze images and videos. There is no doubt. It's very difficult actually to do. Analyzing video and image data is very difficult because you can't directly analyze it. You have to convert it into binary. Once it becomes binary, in Hadoop you have a format called sequence file. You have to read it as sequence file and write a program to analyze it. It's actually a very difficult job to analyze these kind of files. And not everybody need to analyze it. Let me give you a real-time real example. I was working with 24 by 7, right, the customer care company. What is their primary business? Customer care. In customer care, people call, right? Do you think they will listen to what customer is calling? You are giving support to other companies hmm? and you are running a call center. In a call center, customers will call, right? Do you actually listen to the what they are talking? Let's say take idea for example. How many calls idea will be getting in customer care? Do you really think they analyze your calls? For example, if you were an angry customer, you spoke for one hour, that call is recorded, the person who took the call will go to the manager and the next meeting manager will analyze that call and say that this was your mistakes. I am saying, do you actually analyze big data analytics on these kind of things? Not really. You will analyze the metadata, not the actual data. How many people called? What was the duration? What they pressed? This is the data, not the actual audio data. Because you can do it. I am not saying it is impossible. But then you have to, so how do you understand what he is speaking? And it may fail, it may not fail. You, can, you are not 100% sure. If it is a US customer or something, we can approximately match. If it is an Indian customer, how do you identify all this? It's not possible, right? He may speak any language, any accent, right? So practically these things are not possible. I am saying you can analyze unstructured data. There is no doubt about it. And companies like Facebook and all do. Facebook actually analyze video data. They have to for some reasons that they have to do, right? And there they have written complicated algorithms to read and convert to binary and all. But if you are going to work in a regular project, you will all see structured data. CSV files, JSON data, you know, normal text data. But if you are storing also, uh, so you need a class to read these type of files. That's what the question was, right?